Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and today's show is made possible by Rex MD. They are FDA approved and the number one leader in men's telehealth. I'll tell you all about what they have later on in today's show, but you can get their best deal ever, 90% off, only $2 per dosage at rexmd.com slash chat. We're going to be giving some draft news for the Cowboys. Jackson Smith in Jigba per NFL.com is visiting the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he is Dallas State eligible, which refers to the the local prospects from the area that can come in. Uh, I believe, that, though, that this is a 30-day visit, meaning this is where 30 official, I should say. So there's a limited number of, of visits you can do that you can bring in. Um, to, to have on, on this team and, and eligible and, and bring them in for physicals, up close meetings. Pretty clear sign the Cowboys have some interest in taking JSN. He's not a burner. He's kind of only played slot receiver, but he does get open, and he's, I think, the maybe not consensus, but the general number one wide receiver in this year's class. I will make note that there were several visits mentioned uh, for Jackson Smith and Jigba and the Dallas Cowboys, the Ravens, Texans, Bills, Falcons were among the other ones. And Houston at 12, especially if they take C.J. Stroud, would certainly make some sense there. I don't think JSN gets to you, but I am glad the Cowboys showing interest in him in this draft class. Speaking of draft, how about taking a tight end early? The Cowboys showing interest in tight ends. Now, they do have good tight ends on the roster, at least promising ones. Jake Ferguson, uh, Peyton Hendershot as well. Mike Fisher has a source telling him that they want to find their Travis Kelsey, which, of course they do. Everybody wants their Travis Kelsey. And who doesn't want, perhaps, the best tight end of his generation, minimum top two tight end in the NFL right now? The Cowboys have done work on tight ends. They had a lot of interest at the Combine. They met with a ton of them. They've brought several, including Darnell Washington, in for a 30 visit. And it just so happens this year's tight end class is absolutely loaded. Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame. Dalton Kincaid from Utah. I got to clear that back, by the way. Luke Musgrave from Oregon State. Darnell Washington, you mentioned him from Georgia. Some smaller school guys. Tucker Craft, South Dakota State. Uh, Zach Koontz out of Old Dominion. Sam Laporta, Luke Schoonmaker. I mean, they, those guys are probably top three tight ends in a normal class or top five tight ends at minimum. Bretton Strange, Davis Allen, more and more. There's a lot of great tight ends in this year's draft class that are going to have possibility in round one or on day two for the Dallas Cowboys. So would you draft a tight end in round one? There are some real red flags about taking a tight end in general. The history, the value, all of that is valid, but it's a great class. So what do you think? Would you take a tight end in round one? Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. All right, now again, I mentioned the tight ends. They don't hit that often in round one. Uh, you're looking at the dudes from round one. Maybe TJ Hawkinson. I think Kyle Pitts will get there, but his quarterback's been bad, which again, positional value, you're, you're leaning on a quarterback being great. You have that in Dallas, so you've got some benefits there, but there are... There are valid concerns about, do you want to take a tight end? Like, that's a tough position to hit in the NFL. It is a great tight end class, though. I am a huge fan of what this class offers, especially early on. And depending on how the board falls, yes, I would have interest. In an ideal world, you get lucky, and one of them slides to you in number two. But that doesn't always happen. Now, speaking of getting lucky, uh, maybe you get a little lucky and things don't go the way you want in the bedroom. Maybe you're not having the confidence, whatever. Yeah, those nights where you're a little nervous, maybe you had too much to drink. There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift in drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, Rex MD is here, even if you had a few too many beers. Rex MD is FDA approved and the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. They have sponsored today's Cow Report to help you always be prepared. Rex MD has made it simple, easy, and cost-effective to help all the men out there last longer and feel more confident in the bedroom. RexMD makes getting generic and branded Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription. They deliver it discreetly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, no copays. Take advantage of the best deal they've ever offered 
and save up to 90% off. Only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash chat for the limited time deal. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for you guys to get started. That's rexmd.com slash chat for up to 90% off. Link, rexmd.com slash chat, is in the comment section and the description of today's show. A rumor I didn't really expect to see happening is on Anthony Brown. Fan cited has floated the idea of going out and and trying to acquire, or I should say resign, Anthony Brown. And I'm, as a former defender of Anthony Brown, I have issues with this idea. Uh, Brown tore his Achilles back in December, and just the straight timeline of a recovery makes it dicey for week one, and... You're a 30-ish year old quarter cornerback coming off a torn Achilles. The team does not need you to start, let alone play right now. I don't see a ton of value here. I thought Anthony Brown was not, he did not have the type of year that I thought he was going to. I thought he was much worse last year than what he was in 2020. So he's a pending free agent, or he's a free agent, I, I should say. And where would he rank it on your depth chart? At best. It's CB4, maybe? Trayvon Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, Deron Bland are all correctly going to play over Anthony Brown. Jordan Lewis is under contract still. I kind of want to see Israel Mukwamu play. So I don't see much of the need to bring back Anthony Brown because they got Stephon Gilmore and they could potentially draft somebody. So I don't see a need to bring back AB. What do you guys think, though? S for sign, P for pass. Go ahead and vote for me in the comment section of today's video. S for sign, P for pass. Go ahead and vote right now. In general, if I'm adding another corner, I'm not doing it via the veteran free agent route, especially not one coming off an injury that might cost him some time in week one. Now, drafting a corner, young, under team control for four plus years, that makes some sense to me. Adding even on a two-year, a $2 million deal for Anthony Brown, like, I just, I don't see the benefit in doing that. I think Brown would rather go somewhere he could actually play because everything goes according to plan. Anthony Brown, if he were to resign, does not play a snap in Dallas, at least meaningful snap. What's the benefit for either side there? I say pass. Uh, we are continuing to grow. We got 254,000 subs. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. 155K is Next up, we are a long way to go, 944. You want free Cowboys videos every single day? Hit that sub button right now. Austin Eckler trade has now appeared as an idea for the Cowboys. Bleacher Report looked at the contenders, pros and cons of adding Eckler. And the the, the pro side is good getting a, a good football player, right? He and Tony Pollard would form a pretty fun duo uh, from that standpoint. But Eckler has made it clear he wants a new deal. He probably wants seven, eight, nine, if not ten million dollars per year. And Eckler is good at football. And now he's not really a thousand yard rusher. He's more of a receiving threat. He's at seven hundred twenty-two yards. You're approaching the one thousand five hundred yard uh, combined total. But this would be a third contract for running back who you're committing big-time money to, you got Tony Pollard under contract for $10 million, and you're probably going to draft somebody. Now, you have Ronald Jones, Malik Davis, Rico Dowdle, none of those guys uh, even locked into the roster beyond, of course, Tony Pollard from that standpoint. So I do want to add another back, but I'm not sure a trade for Austin Eckler is the way I would go about it. How would you guys fix it, or at least address it? Maybe fix is the wrong word, but you guys know what I mean. D for draft, T for trades, F for free agency. The real ones know what that abbreviates to. Sound off for me in the comment section. I'm not doing free agency or trade if I have to pay them real money. Um, I'm not trying to pay another running back when I've already committed to Tony Power for $10 million here. That's not, that's not good business. That's not good roster construction, as we just saw moving on from Zeke Elliott. I say draft somebody. Could be round, if you Bijan's there in round one, you know what? I can live with it. Round two? Sure. Round three, round four, it's a great running back class. I see no added benefits of throwing more money at the running back spot. Throwing some more draft capital? That I can do.
One last note, the Odell Beckham Jr. saga is over, at least for this year, knowing how things tend to go around Jerry World. Odell Beckham got one year, $15 million guaranteed worth up to $18 million from the Ravens. Uh, it's very funny to see Odell Beckham say, I'm not asking for 15 to $20 million, and then get 15 to $20 million. And So he was asking for that. Um, the Cowboys had constantly been linked to Odell Beckham. Uh, and this is a shockingly big deal. When the number is of up to 18, I'm like, oh, so you got like half of that in real money. Everything else was up to. That That, that, that was my guess. Like, oh, it's just going to be it's gonna be one year, $10 million. No, it's one year, 15. Uh, overpay for the, for the Ravens as far as I'm concerned. And the Cowboys played this correctly. Gave, gave a fifth round pick, whatever. Uh, got the Texans to eat some of the money and are paying Brandon Cooks about $12 million this year. Uh, got to take less money next year. So the Cowboys, in terms of the Odell Beckham-Cooks drama, absolutely played that part of the wide receiver room correctly.